All right, everybody, welcome back. So glad to have you here for another deep dive. This time, we're heading straight into the heart of some serious international political drama. Buckle up, because we're going to South Korea. Yeah, this week, things have been anything BDT column over there. Seriously, mm -hmm. we're talking protests in the streets, yeah. military deployments, and even the word martial law being tossed around like it's nothing. Exactly. And we've got all the news reports right here ready to unpack this whirlwind of events. Trust me, you are not going to believe what's been going down in South Korea. It's one of those situations that makes you realize just how fragile democracies can be, yeah. even in countries that seem totally stable, you know? Right. So let's get everyone up to speed. South Korea's president, Yoon suk yeol he actually went and declared martial law. Officially, he's blaming threats from North Korea. Right. And from something he's calling uh, anti-state elements. So help us understand this. What on earth could push a leader to take such a dramatic step? Well, we kind of have to rewind a bit. See, President Yoon's government has been walking on eggshells ever since April. Okay. That's when the opposition party won by a landslide in those National Assembly elections. Oh, yeah. I remember reading about those elections. It was a pretty huge upset. If I uh, recall. Yeah, big time. So what exactly made the public turn against Yoon so strongly? What happened? Well, there are a few things. For starters, his economic policies were really unpopular. Like a lot of people felt he just wasn't doing enough to tackle the, the rising cost of living, you know? Yeah. And then there's the whole issue of income inequality, which, you know, keeps getting worse. Of course, it's a huge problem everywhere these days. Exactly. And it's super frustrating, right, when you're struggling to afford basic necessities. Absolutely. And meanwhile, it seems like the folks at the top are just cruising along unaffected. Exactly. So that was the kind of mood brewing in South Korea. I see, yeah. And then, to make matters worse, there were all these corruption scandals. They really did a number on his administration's image. Right. Those scandals involving the First Lady. Right. I vaguely remember something about designer clothes. You got it. We're talking headlines about the First Lady allegedly getting a Dior bag, like a super expensive one, as a bribe. No kidding. Yeah. You can imagine how that played out, right? Doesn't exactly inspire confidence in your leaders, does it? Definitely not. And then there were even accusations of insider trading and some shady stock market stuff. Oh, wow. And all fingers pointed to people in Yoon's inner circle. So basically, it all added up to this feeling that his whole administration was completely out of touch and probably corrupt. Makes sense. So the opposition saw an opening and went for it, I imagine. Oh, absolutely. They saw their chance to really push back against Yoon. And remember, they now had the majority in the National Assembly, right? Right. So they started by proposing some pretty major cuts to the president's budget. Cuts he couldn't just veto. Oh, I see. Yeah. And then they got even bolder. They actually started impeachment proceedings. Against Yoon himself. Not directly against Yoon, but against some key members of his cabinet. Gotcha. And some prosecutors who were seen as, like, totally loyal to him. So you can just imagine the tension, right? Yeah, I can only imagine. That's some serious political maneuvering. Oh, yeah. And all this leads to this dramatic declaration of martial law. Right. Now, to be fair, South Korea has this long history of tension with North Korea, right? And there have been you know, provocations from the North before. But in this case, it seems like the timing of Yoon's declaration and the fact that he's using this term anti-state elements, mm -hmm. it all feels a little bit convenient, wouldn't you say? Yeah, a lot of people raise an eyebrow at that for sure. I bet. It felt to many like a pretty desperate attempt to hold on to power when it felt like it was slipping away. Yeah. All right, so we've got a president under immense pressure, an opposition that's not backing down, and then bam, martial law. So for those of us who aren't, you know, uh, military experts, break it down for us. What does martial law actually look like in practice? What changes? Okay, so basically, martial law means the military steps in and takes control. Yeah. Often that means they suspend civil liberties, you know, your basic rights. Right. And they start governing by decree. So picture this. Soldiers patrolling the streets. Curfews locking everyone down at night. Where? Restrictions on what you can say, where you can gather. So basically, not a whole lot of freedom. Not really, no. It's a major shift away from how a democratic society normally operates. And this isn't something that happens often in South Korea, right? You're right. The last time they had martial law was way back in 1979. Wow, that's a long time ago. Yeah. 
It was after a military coup, actually, a pretty dark period in their history. So the fact that Yoon was even considering it, yeah, that sent a lot of people into a panic. You know, it raises serious questions about whether he's willing to just ignore democratic norms. Right, just to stay in charge. Exactly. So no surprise then that you had these massive protests erupting in Seoul. Oh yeah, thousands of people clashing with the police. I saw the pictures, and then there were those images of lawmakers actually scaling the walls of parliament. Yeah to get in and vote against martial law. I mean, talk about intense. You could just feel the tension through the screen. Absolutely. And yeah. then, get this, totally out of the blue, Yoon completely changes his mind. Yeah. Just hours after declaring martial law. Rally. He withdraws it, orders the troops back to their bases. I mean, can you imagine? All those protesters, they must have been overjoyed. What a roller coaster. Oh, wait. So what do you think happened? Was it just the public pressure that made him back down? It's hard to say for certain. You know, we don't know what went on behind closed doors, but it's very likely that the international reaction played a part. Yeah. The U.S., you know, South Korea's longstanding ally, they came out and expressed grave concern. Right. Although they did reaffirm their commitment to South Korea's security, you know. Of course. And then the U.K. also put out statements expressing their concern and urging everyone to, you know, stick to democratic processes. So this wasn't just an internal South Korean issue. The whole world was watching. Oh, absolutely. The whole thing really put South Korea in a tough spot on the world stage. It raised some serious doubts about how stable the government really is. Yeah. And whether they're truly committed to democratic principles, you know. Right. And all of this is happening while they've got these ongoing tensions with North Korea looming in the background. Right. Exactly. OK, so let's recap. We've got a president struggling with scandal and unpopularity. Mm -hmm. We've got an opposition that's seizing its moment to grab more power. Right. We've got a dramatic declaration of martial law mm -hmm. and then a sudden U-turn. What a story. Absolutely wild. So what happens next? What's the future hold for South Korea? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? I mean, will all this chaos lead to even more instability or will we see some kind of new balance of power emerge? I think it's safe to say that this power struggle is far from over. And it could have consequences that reach far beyond South Korea's borders, especially given that whole situation with North Korea. It's definitely something to keep a close eye on. Absolutely. A story with global implications for sure. Thanks for breaking all that down for us. Until next Work time. Time. See ya.